Gatsby. I'm a psychologist and this is the first weekly edition of what you need to know about catatonia and ASD. Watch it. If you're reading this newsletter, then you need to know about catatonia. Between 12 and 18 percent of individuals with ASD with autism have catatonia and actually most researchers believe that the rate is higher and that means that if you know 20 people who have autism probably two of them have characteristics of catatonia the relationship between catatonia and autism is so significant that in 2013 the diagnostic manual the dsm-5 included catatonia as a specifier for autism. And it was about time. Catatonia has been related to autism as long as history, and we're just beginning to understand that relationship. Exiguous, it's a good word. Exiguous means scanty. And that is what most people in the field of autism, exiguous describes their knowledge, our knowledge of catatonia. It's time to become informed. Catatonia has many of the same characteristics as autism, so there's an overlap and sometimes when catatonia begins to appear, people just think that's more autism. Catatonia tends to come uh, along gradually. The onset tends to be slow. So again, people may think that's just the autism and they don't recognize the increasing characteristics of catatonia. Therefore, catatonia and autism remains unrecognized and untreated. In autism, the early characteristics of, of catatonia can be so gradual that they can become advanced before they're recognized. When they become advanced, they can be incapacitating. The individual can stop uh, taking care of their daily living skills, uh, stop participating in life activities, and in the long run, catatonia can be life-threatening or fatal for individuals with autism and catatonia. Catatonia should be assessed in every person who has autism. In the upcoming weeks on what you need to know about catatonia and autism, we're going to talk about the characteristics of catatonia and the treatment of catatonia. Stay tuned.